Welcome everybody to the nationwide prayer campaign to end abortion forever. We've been running this for five months now. Praise the Lord. Um, I just like to encourage everybody to continue to wear their miraculous medals, their scapulars. These are gifts from heaven and we need it now. We need more fervent prayers from the heart. And if you could get to yourself to the sacrament of confession, this is how our prayers are heard. You know, so let's uh, get started with the prayers and thank you again. Amen. So everybody, we have Zach King again today, and he's going to be answering questions. Hi, Zach. How are you doing? Hey, Karen. I'm doing good. How are you? Good, thank you. Again, Zach is the ex-Satanic wizard converted through the Blessed Mother by the tiny, tiny little miraculous metal, the, the small thing that has such power. And uh, Zach, did you get that testimony of Father Ronan that was sent to you? I did. He's a priest that also was converted through the miraculous metal. Yeah, yeah, we should do a conference together. I know, and Deborah, our friend, sent him your testimony. So hopefully he'll get it soon and watch it. We got to get these conferences back on the road. I know, I know. It's going to happen. So, um, Zach, I have some questions for you. Um, let me just get okay. it together. Okay. I have some pedophilia uh, questions, okay. uh, but first, before going to them, I have what in their own minds makes the Illuminati bloodline superior? I'm not thinking that it's superior. I'm thinking they're just more nefarious than the rest of us. Okay. You know, if it's, it's sort of like, you know, kings and queens were born into that. They didn't go out and scour the countryside for the smartest person and say, you're our king. Mm. You know, you were born into that. You know, you just happened to fall into the bloodline of, you know, the, the, the seed of David or, the, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the, 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 even if you look back in England, you know, the, the kings and queens now, they were born into that line. They weren't, they weren't created. Right. So that makes them feel special about themselves, obviously. Right, right. You know, it's, it's, they're feeling special about something they had no control of. Right. Okay. You know, I just happened to be born into this family, and this makes me a king. Right. Did you rub shoulders with the Illuminati? Yes, I worked with the Illuminati for 12 years. Wow. In, in what, which way? That was who helped rock stars become rock stars. So you helped a lot of uh, rock stars. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Wow. If you wanted to be a rock star, you had to go through the Illuminati. So, um, did you know some of these people? I mean, like were, you were personally involved with them. Yes. Okay. Have any of yes. them converted? Yes, some have converted. Um, usually, the ones that convert do so in California. And there's an exorcist there that works with them, that helps get them out and has to do exorcism with them. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. The, the two main Illuminati members that I worked with, now, they, they weren't the same two people. There was Mr. Black and Mr. White. Hmm. And the, the, those weren't the real names. If you looked at their driver's licenses, they said Mr. Black and Mr. White. But that wasn't their real names. And Mr. Black could be Asian, he could be black, he could be white. He would just, he would be a different person every time. But his name constantly, every time you met him, this guy was Mr. Black. And then there was, sometimes you, another guy would come up and you'd ask, are you Mr. Black? No, I'm Mr. White. And, but it could be anybody. And you never worked with Mr. Black or Mr. White the same. It was never the same guy, but it always was the same name. Hmm. I see. Okay, it's sort of like, um, like St. Joseph, right? I mean, 
Father Joseph in the Divine Mercy Marians, they the one in charge always takes up his name, and that reflects the founder, the founder of, I guess, the order, Father Joseph. Okay. I guess that's kind of similar. Here's another question. How can, can they tell if someone is from their bloodline? That's re referring to the Illuminati again. If they don't know them personally. I guess they'd have to do a DNA test. Hmm. So they can't sense it? Uh, it wouldn't be sensing, but there would be papers that prove who they are. You'd, you'd have to look for... Um, if you don't have DNA, then you'd have to look for birth certificates and to make sure they're not fraudulent. Okay. And then some people have papers that prove who they are. Like, they have like a descendants list or something like that. <clears throat> or they've had, um, I don't know what the, in the 70s, there were people that would travel door to door and offer you if you wanted a coat of arms for your house. Because I know my parents got one of those. And it, it checks your bloodline and goes back however far and finds out, you know, who you might be related to throughout history. And, and I wonder how fake that was since they didn't have computers back then. You couldn't, you know, you take a lead work to do that. Hmm. So if they find out they're in the bloodline of an Illuminati member... So it elevates them in, if they wanted to go into there. It elevates them right well, away if they could prove it. Does, it does, but generally the Illuminati knows who its members are. Okay, gotcha. You know, you're not just wandering around aimlessly and wondering if you're an Illuminati member. Hmm. You know, and then there's certain names that are associated with the Illuminati. So if you have that name, that there's a good chance that you are an Illuminati member. So if your fam family is in the bloodline of um, Illuminati members from the past, that means that your bloodline is cursed? It could mean that, especially if you've been in it for a long time. Okay. Then it just means you need a deliverance. Gotcha. So people, have, have you known of people that uh, they, they found out that they had Illuminati blood and they wanted a deliverance? No. Oh, okay. I found people that wanted to be Illuminati members. Hmm. That is so crazy. You know, I still have people calling me on occasion that want to be Satanists. Wow. Or they want to practice magic. It doesn't matter to them that they'll be damned after they do that, or that if they die, not in the state of grace, they go to hell. That doesn't matter to some people. So they don't realize you've had a conversion, right? Because they, they know I've had the conversion. But if I'm here to help people, why can't I help them sell their soul? Oh, wow. Hmm. Is it true that major music studios provide the services of putting a curse to afflict the public listening to their songs via a hex or reverse litany? Yes. Ah. There are some uh, rap acts that have admitted seeing, um, I can't think of what they're called, they're, they're Jews in, in their, their gear, it, it's like a, it's sort of like a high priest of Jews, and they, they go in and they curse the music, hmm. they do spells on music. And oh, I saw that when I was a high wizard, but I didn't know what they were. And then there are high wizards that also do that kind of work. And then there are also just regular satanic witches that do that kind of work. And I think Wiccans in some cases do that kind of work, but they're not, they don't think they're cursing. They think they're putting a blessing on the music. Hmm. You know, there's a, an interview I do a, a talk on pop culture, and when I open that interview, when I open up that talk, I say that I, I like to ask questions, you know, during to my audience, and I say, who said in an interview 
We literally put magic in our music. We wrote spells into our songs so that when people heard the music, they had to go out and buy the album. They had to buy the track, the eight track. They had to buy tickets. They had to buy merchandise. They had to come see us in concert because we literally wrote spells in our music. And then I opened that up to the floor to get, take get guesses who said that. And people guess things like Ozzy Osbourne or Led Zeppelin. You know, they go for somebody nefarious, somebody that they think would be heavy metal and dark. Mm-hmm. And it was the Beach Boys. Wow. Didn't um, Lady Gaga have a talk about it publicly? Yes. Yes, she said that she, uh, before she hit it big, she was performing in a strip club. And at the end of her set, at the end of the night, she was walking out the back door and this guy approached her and asked her if she wanted to become world famous and a superstar. And she was like, sure, everybody wants that. What do I have to do? And he said, sell your soul to the Illuminati. And that's me. I represent the Illuminati, and I'll make you super famous. So she did it. And she rose to stardom fast. And she rose to stardom fast, right. Wow. Um, what happens to all the children killed and abused in satanic rituals? Can Zach be used as a witness? Can you be used as a witness? Well, if you're killed, you're just killed. I mean, your body's... I mean, think about... I think it's the Center for Missing and Exploited Children has some crazy, insane number, like a million kids a year get stolen. And uh, for the most part, people don't miss them because a lot of them are runaways or raised in satanic covens. You know, a lot of these groups, there's no idea that nobody keeps track of where these kids are, where they got them, or or, you know, where they go, or anything about them. You know, when they're found, bodies are found probably almost every day. Huh. I would imagine that, you know, some of them, I mean, anybody that watches Forensic Files, or um, Criminal Minds, or NCIS, or, you know, any of these shows, we all see that somebody disappears in a wood chipper every once in a while or in a box or a barrel of lye, or, you know, you're taken out and sliced up and fed to the sharks. I mean, there's, uh, whatever the limit of your imagination is, it's how many ways there are to get rid of a body. Hmm. You know, I, I uh, had an inspiration very strongly to pray for child- children and adults that are kidnapped and uh, I don't know, maybe it's my angel whispering in the ears, but there's a lot more than we know, you know? There's, there's a crazy amount of kidnappings and human trafficking that happens all around us. Yeah. That that we're unaware of. In plain if sight. Live, yeah, if you live in a, a city or a state that has more than one interstate that connects, then you're in a place. And if it has more than that, like, the more you have, the more human trafficking is happening there. Hmm. Like, if you live in a place that has, like, five interstates coming all together, yeah, there's a huge trafficking ring there. I have one of that near us. Well, I think four or five. I'm not sure. Oh, my goodness. Um, are you afraid? Let me read this again. For his, for um, for your life from threats of Soros and Bill Gates. No. Okay. I mean, okay. Where would I be safer? Hiding under a rock, because who else is hiding next to me? Who else doesn't want to be out in the light? Who wants to be kept safe in the darkness and not let the world see what he really is? That'd be the devil. Mm-hmm. So. If I'm hiding in the dark, the devil's going to be right next to me. So I'd rather be in broad daylight, walking down the center of the street with the Blessed Mother holding my hand. Because you know who's not next to me at that point? 
the devil. That makes sense. Okay, here's another one. Why would Bill Gates be offering the cup of blood for everyone to drink when Zach was the high satanic Satanist performing the rituals? It wasn't a cup of blood. It was uh, adrenochrome. Okay. Oh, I have a question about that. Go ahead, Zach. It was adrenochrome, and he likes to think of himself as being in charge. Hmm. And I'm fine. If you want to be in charge, that's, you know, do and say whatever you want. Just don't command me to do anything. Well, he, he, he got it for that. In the occasion where he, he was commanding you to drink. Right? right, right. He commanded me to do something and I'm not down with that. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that document that I signed that said, do you want to be the high wizard? You know, and if you say yes, no one can tell you what to do. I took that at its word. Hmm. Are you done with that? Or could I go yes. to? Okay. Yeah, go so, ahead. so now, um, now this is speculation and I don't want anyone to say that there's any proof of this, but it looks obvious. During the debate between Trump and Biden, Biden looked visibly different. He looked uh, cerebrally like more on target than he's ever been in a long time. And his eyes look black instead of blue. Okay. So people speculate that he was on adrenochrome or drugs or both or whatever. What do you think? I didn't see it. If his eyes were black, maybe he's possessed. He, um, the irises prob probably were very dilated. Adrenochrome makes you younger. Yeah, he looked younger that day. Now, I hear a little bit of it will keep you at your same age. And a lot of it will make you like almost go backwards in age and you'll get younger. Hmm. But that's he's involved in something extremely nefarious if he's doing that. Yeah. I mean, most people that know anything about adrenochrome know that it comes from the blood of tortured children. And, and it's addictive, right? Because once you start feeling young, you need to keep feeding that. That is correct. Oh, my gosh, it's so horrible. Do these children die, or it's just uh, siphon from them? I think them? They, they use them until they can't get any more out of them. Ugh. And then they probably die. Oh, Lord. Here's another question. There is a lot of pedophilia. And homos... Sorry. Okay. TV talking. Okay, hold on. There is a lot of pedophilia and homosexuality involved with these satanic rituals why not speak about these i have spoken about these you know in 2016 i was doing a talk in jacksonville florida and i talked about uh jeffrey epstein and the lolita express and the private island that he takes people to and there was a large group of people at this talk that had never heard of any of that and they thought i made it up they thought, well, we can't check on this. We can't verify it. So, and he knows that he knows he's saying something that nobody could check on. So, you know, he obviously just made it up. Then I got a call from these people. There was a woman that was, had hosted me there and she was talking to them about that. Like the next day they were at a breakfast and she was saying, what do you think about Epstein and all of that? And they said, we've looked for it. We can't find anything that, that says that anywhere. And we think he just made it up. And she's like, I'm telling you, everything he's ever said, I've verified. He's telling you the truth, even though you can't find it. And they're like, no, until we find proof of it, we're not going to believe that. And then last year, I got a call from that lady again, who said, yeah, we had another breakfast. And uh, all those guys were like, huh, he was right. He was telling the truth. You know, we just saw it on the news. 
Wow. Was Jeffrey Epstein a uh, Satanist? He hired me. He hired you? Yeah, he had me do a spell for him. Wow. So you, you met him one-on-one? -on -one. Yeah. Did he commit suicide? I don't believe that. I, I really, I don't believe he's dead. I believe if he's dead, he was murdered. But I believe that the government took him, whisked him away, and gave him a deal. Claimed he was dead. And that's why so many of these pedophile rings are being found. Right. Okay. Because right, he has insider information on everybody. I thought, you know, um, a friend of mine, our one of our friends, said that uh, the girlfriend, the f girl, remember the girlfriend? Yeah. Uh, she, they believe that she's... Uh, Revealing um, all those secrets, and that's why. But it could be him, too, or it could be both of them. Well, she had a lot of insider information. Yeah. Did you meet her? Yes. So th they went to you for spells. Did they go in into, like, um, the different sacrifices? And um, were they? No. did they take part of that? Did he seem like a regular person? He was definitely a pedophile. I mean, like, I mean, big time. We all know that, but. Well, I saw a, I saw a documentary on Netflix, and like he was happy. It, it, it said that there was a quote from somebody, how that he had gotten two twelve-year-olds to fly here from another country, and that was for like a birthday present or something like that. Oh. And he was so happy that he got that. But I went to his private island, and. All the girls look like they were, I'm going to guess, like 16 or 17 to maybe mid-20s. Hmm. I didn't have sex with any of them, but, you know, just looking on an island, he's, you know, he's got a private island with all these girls in, in bathing suits walking everywhere. You know, obviously, I'm checking out everything he's got. Mm -hmm. I never thought that these are a bunch of children. Wow. You know, if I'd have thought those were kids... I wouldn't have stayed. Hmm. But being uh, a Satan uh, wizard, a satanic wizard at that time, that wouldn't that you wouldn't have had the morals to up and leave, right? I've saved children. Even then, I've, res I've rescued children that have been in bad situations as a high wizard. As a high wizard. Yeah. So you, they escaped? Yes. None of these people came up to me and said, can you rescue me? Can you save me? I don't want to be here. All these women looked happy. Hmm. Maybe they were on drugs too. If they were on drugs, they were on cocaine or something because they weren't like lounging around and, you know, looking like they're like in an opium den or smoking weed they were high energy and running around and you know playing volleyball or frisbee or just running around chasing each other having a water pistol fight hmm. do you think that um satan snags snags these people um to be addicted to pedophilia because i'm not quite sure how that works I don't know what makes somebody's brain not work properly mm -hmm. because some of these people like they'll tell you even investigators will tell you that once you know once somebody molests somebody once they mm -hmm. want to do it again it's like now what is it about that because you know when i got married i didn't want to go and cheat with somebody else i didn't want to go sleep with another woman i was happy being married Mm -hmm. You know, these child molesters, once they molest one, they have to molest 10 or 20. There's some kind of addiction, uh, a soul tie or some something that flies into them, a spirit, it seems like, you know, that makes them come out for more. Well, it seems like whatever's tied to pedophilia and human trafficking is also tied in with abortion. Hmm. Yeah, for sure.
Okay, here's another question. Why not uncover the senators and politicians now before we vote? Let's call Alpha Satanists now. Why keep quiet? I've done a lot of talks and I've answered a lot of questions regarding things like that. But at this point, it's sort of like, who isn't involved? Mm. I mean, do you go by who's successful? Because a lot of those people have done spells or have gone to, you know, get a list of who goes to Bohemian Grove. It's not that hard. It's out in the parking lot in an unmarked van, you know, and record everybody's uh, car tag that goes in or take pictures of people that are going in or look at, you know, the, the, the major airport you're closest to is San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So check, you know, two weeks before the event starts, check out who's flying into San Francisco. And there can't be that many famous people going to San Francisco just to be in San Fran. And they're obviously going to be at Bohemian Grove. Hmm. So I, in one of the other shows, you had said that uh, you've seen om almost all of the presidents in Bohemian Grove, except for Trump. Right. And then there was one, Ronald Reagan, that was there that looked very uncomfortable being there. Yeah, that was 1987. That was my first year as a high wizard. He wouldn't he shake looked, your hand. Yeah, he wouldn't shake my hand. I walked up. I, I voted for him. So I thought, hey, it's Ronald Reagan. And I stuck my hand out. And he started to shake my hand. And then he looked at me. You know, I'm dressed like the High Wizard. And he just pulled his hand back. and He didn't step backwards, but he started leaning backwards. Hmm. So do you think it's because Trump was never invited or he refused all inv invitations? Do you think he knows about this? or? I think he knows. Okay. He made a reference, I think it was in 2016, that Hillary Clinton worked for the Illuminati. Wow. Is she with the Illuminati? I think she was going to be put in by the Illuminati, and I think... Divine mercy is what got us Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But as you said, I don't know if we said it on the show or in a private conversation, that they still follow through with their plan, even though Hillary didn't win. Uh, they had a plan to put in place a pandemic. But at the time you were right. there, of course, they didn't have the name COVID. Well, when that, when that plan was hatched, that was in the 90s. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. There's another question. Hold on one second. What kind of prayers? You know, because, okay. because that happened in the 90s, the, the pandemic could have been H1N1. True. Do you think... Um, do you think Biden is satanic? It belongs and, to the culture of death. And doesn't it seem like Satan has ta taken uh, dominion over the Democratic Party? Absolutely. I mean, one of their platforms is abortion. So, okay. That's just yeah, out of when, common when sense. You go to the, when you go to the polls to vote, you can't think, well, you know, they're in favor of abortion. But Trump is such a jerk when he speaks. Really? Do you think God would put that above the killing of babies? Mm -hmm. I mean, what what issue that Trump has that you're against is stronger than the killing of babies? Is he, more important than the killing of babies? He has saved babies. He has pulled money away from um, making easy access in other countries. That was the first executive order he did. And, and with the, um, the, the new stimulus package mm -hmm. the Democrats want to do, it would give a lot of money to Planned Parenthood. Yeah. That Donald Trump has taken away. Right. Right. 
how effective in your personal view is the rosary against Satan and the demonic? Oh my gosh. It's like the, I don't know if it would be the number one tool or the number two tool. Mm. You know, I was conducting an abortion and it was an assisted abortion. I was there with the abortion doctor. He would have done the actual killing, but he kept saying the baby's not in the birth canal. You know, we're wasting our time. We need to leave. There's people outside praying rosaries or praying Hail Marys. You know, I, I repeated the first part of a Hail Mary, and my friend repeated the second part, and neither one of us knew what that was. And we went back to our abortion, and the doctor just got through saying, the baby's not in the birth canal, we're wasting our time, let's, you know, come back later this afternoon, which I couldn't do, or tomorrow, which I couldn't do. And while we're sitting there discussing that, we hear the baby cry. Botched abortion. Praise right, the Lord. Botched abortion. I've had three botched abortions. And there's been a lot of botched abortions, and it's because people are outside praying rosaries. Praise God. There's been a lot of times, and I've heard this story more than once, where they've taken an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe out there, like a life-size image, and a woman be in the lobby, and she runs outside and kneels in front of the picture. She doesn't know what it is, but to her, it's a live woman. Like, she sees a live woman that's pregnant telling her not to abort her child. I heard that with another speaker. Um, they had the same same uh, person they saw kneeling and crying before the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. She was a person, not not a picture. Right. And that changed everything. So these images are miraculous. We have to keep using it. Praise God. I, I think... Um, what is this called? Uh, the the Divine Mercy image and the the um, Our Lady of Guadalupe are so important in in abort. You know they they use it in all these abortion clinics to stop right. it. You know so it's effective. So um, well, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. But Zach, you know all this stuff is coming out. I'm Hunter Biden. A lot of truth is being shined on. And uh, I think it's funny that we never hear the word collusion anymore. Yeah. You know, after it was found out that Hillary paid for that, paid mm -hmm. for a fake file. <laughs> and, uh, and then all the all the they're still talking about impeachment. And it's like, you guys made up everything. And it was, it was all found out to be lies. Mm -hmm. How is your party even still in existence? I know. And they talk about how racist Donald Trump is, but surely everybody has Google. Everybody can look up history of things. People are lazy and they want to believe what they want to b believe. Well, who invented the Ku Klux Klan, the most racist organization in the world? Democrats. Of all time. The Democrats is the Democratic Party. You know, the GOP, the grand old party, the GOP was formed to fight the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. And now they're blamed for the Ku Klux Klan. Yep. It's they like, turn everything around. Yeah, they turn like every up is down, down is up, black yep. is white. Exactly. And you look at his staff, whether it be in his uh, professional organization he has women he has every race even in upper management and even in the white house you know so you know the evidence is there but people refuse to believe it i know catholic women of people that are upset with me because you know i they think that i'm just a minion of um donald trump but they didn't know I was against him until the Lord shone, shone his light, you know?
They hate everything that comes out of his mouth. They hate the fact that the Lord chose him. And they quote him that he's the chosen one. So the Lord chose him. He's bringing God in. I'm friends with a bunch of priests, and one of them I was speaking to recently says, have you noticed that everyone that hates Donald Trump also hates Jesus Christ? <sighs> or has tremendous amount of pride. Even, even Black Lives Matter is talking about things against Jesus and tearing down statues of people that helped them back in the day. Like they tore down a statue of Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Who helped slavery against slavery. Right. Well, they're trying to rewrite history. Yeah. Well, one thing for sure, um, Trump is, you know, like Trump, if he gets elected again, which I believe, I believe not because I see it with my eyes. It's something out of the spirit. I believe that he'll bring the spirit of patri patriotism back into the United States. Because there's this... had that since Reagan. Yeah. And he's so patriotic. You know, it's, it's beautiful. You know, whenever I see that, I feel, you know, very touched. I hated, I hated that we had a president that wouldn't salute the flag. Obama. Yeah. He he changed a lot of people from loving our country. You know. Well, he doesn't love it. Right. Did and you saw him in Bohemian Grove when he was much younger with Soros. Yeah, that was 1994. And what did Soros say to you? Soros didn't say anything. There was a guy that mm -hmm. He was walking with Soros. I was walking with the guy that runs the growth. At okay. that time, it was a guy named Richard, I think. And I was walking with a large group, and they were pointing out the people that wanted my services. Mm -hmm. And we were going across a field, and they were on a collision course for us, which, if we actually collide, then he's going to be tasered to the ground or have something negative happen to him because... You can't come up to me unless you have an appointment to see me. And this group of people is walking with me. And I keep my eye on these other two people that are on this collision course because this is the first fun of my day mm -hmm. is getting to watch somebody get tasered to the ground. Mm -hmm. But we stopped so that this guy could tell me about this group of people over here that wanted something from me. And these other two guys walked right past us. So we didn't have a collision. They didn't get tasered. Everything was fine. And I was disappointed. And as they walked on, the guy that I was walking with said, pointed to the, the black guy and said, he's going to be president one day. And I looked at him and I thought, nobody elected Jesse Jackson. Why would they vote for him? Hmm. And the thing is that um, his birth certificate was not verified um, right you know how come Donald Trump has to supply his tax records we never got Barack Obama's birth certificate yeah exactly exactly you know I'm not exactly I wouldn't lump myself into a birther category you know I'm not like oh no he's got to show his birth certificate but everybody else has got to show his birth certificate how come he doesn't because it's a requirement to be a pre president right it's like everybody else has to do it how come he's exempt Right. Right. This is when people decide to take a stand and say, oh, no, not everybody has to supply that. Go like, why'd you make the stand with the guy that can't prove he's American? He didn't want to furnish it because he was important in America. Even his own brother told told the world, you know, half brother. So, um, his, his mother said that he wasn't right. I don't think he really, I don't know. A lot of, a lot of blacks don't believe he did anything for them. You know, a lot of people don't think he did anything for them. Americans period. 
You know, right. such corruption. A lot of money poured out of this country, even at the on his last days or the last day. So, thank I really God. was surprised that he left. Yeah. Thought he was going to declare martial law and lock himself in. Right, right. So, um, a lot of people don't see that Trump is um, is like a good president, and they they crucify him. But the whole thing is, well, especially what, what did he promise to do, and how much of that has he done? Almost everything he promised. Almost everything. Yeah came to pass and he started immediately right and when he did his speech about his first hundred days or whatever it was he went down the list of everything he had done so far mm -hmm. and he got a standing ovation for that because you know he was doing everything he said he was going to do right right and now is the major swamp, <laughs> the the swamp clearing. That's why there's such a very huge campaign to bring so much confusion in the air and just don't let any truth come out. Let it be covered by the smoke screen of lies, you know, because they're going down. Um, I, I feel that if Biden really gets in, that it's the end of our country. Oh, yeah, it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know, if people look at the name Trump and they remember the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, his name is in triumph, except two letters are missing, I and H, Immaculate Heart. He's part of the Immaculate Heart. He's unveiling, and he doesn't even know it. He's unveiling the lies that we were, we were living through. You know, he's cleaning the water in the fish tank. He's you know? draining the swamp. He's draining the swamp. And um, one of the Jewish rabbis, who was a Messianic Jew, um, had, he, he's an, a very well-respected person. I can't even find his video anymore on uh, YouTube. But this was one of the first things that peeled my eyes open. It showed in the Old Testament, if you follow the characters the way he showed it, he said Donald will be elected. The name Donald is there. The name King Cyrus is there. The exact date of his election was there. Okay? And so, so like, they believed it. And, you know, Cyrus, King Cyrus... He was not even religious. He was no one they thought would be a savior to the, the Jews that were in exile, you know? And so when they showed him the words of Isaiah that were, was on scrolls with his exact name there, he released them to the, their promised land, which they had been away for, I think, 70 years. And when he went, he brought them there, rebuilt the temple. And not only that, what else did he do? He built a wall. <laughs> he built a wall for their protection. People here are misguided. They think the wall is, is, is so bad and so evil. But I'm so glad that I saw that show Breaking Bad. Because that's just a small bit of what's really happening. You know? People, people rummaging into our country. Bringing those drugs that are destroying lives, families, and making them trillions of dollars. So he he is a he is like Cyrus, you know. Is okay. You got a big hug from Brazil. Adriano <laughs> Hendler. <laughs> Hi Adriano. How's Brazil? Well, Brazil is my favorite country in the world. Did you hear that? <laughs> Of all the places that I have toured, that is my favorite country to go to. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, John Lasik, and thank you, uh, Deborah Benedon. Thank you for the questions. Um, is there anything you want to add um, in these? Uh... All right, I'm on, I'm on an interview. Um, 
I'm, I'm thinking that the devil is ramping things up because I've gotten 15 phone calls in two days. Wow. Like, I usually get, like, I had slowed down. I used to have one time, I used to get multiple calls every day. And now I get probably three or four calls a week. Yeah. And now I've gotten 15 calls in two days. What are they about, predominantly? Uh, the devil. Different attacks that people are going through. Well, I believe a lot of people have been so uh, numb by the devil, but now he's flying out of everywhere that people are freaking and they're realizing. Oh, you know, he spent so much time hiding himself. Right. And now he's like coming out like, hey, guess what? I'm real. Yeah. Let me live in your body and in your mind and torment you. Right. Um, oh, Adriana says, hello, my brother. Um, so, okay, so Zach, any last words for this week? Uh, hang in there. You know, never say die, don't give up, all, all the regular, you know. Stay in peace. Just, yeah, yeah, just because just things look dark doesn't mean they are. Yeah. Just because you don't see a way out doesn't mean there isn't one. Right. Maybe you haven't looked in every direction. Right. Right. What does the Bible say 365 times? I don't know. Fear not. <laughs> One for each day of the year. Fear not. Have no fear. Be in peace. God is here. God is bigger than all of this. Okay? Oh, I, I also have to let you know, everybody, by the way, oh, I wish I said this earlier. We're having Sister Dee Dee um, Byrne, who spoke on the Republican National Convention. She was a wonderful nun who's also a surgeon and an army, sir, an, an army, what is she? I don't know what yeah, ranking she I, is. I, 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 read, I, I listened to that interview, I mean, that, that talk, it was pretty good. Awesome, right? Yeah. So she couldn't do it this Saturday, but she's coming the following, following Saturday. And um, because her, her fellow nun sister just passed away, the, the funeral is this Saturday, which makes it even better because my friend pointed out that the next Saturday will be the darkest day of the year. It's Halloween. So we bring on the light because we're going to have probably three or four speakers that day. You all have to spread the word and help me. Help me be trumpets. Uh, spread the word. I can't come to that. It's it's all online. Here, yeah, Adriana has a question. I have a question. Can the United States ban abortion across the country if we pray hard for this miracle? That's what yes, this it, this it, that's it, what it's this. It's in my book, how to shut it down. And the prayers are here. We do it every three o'clock. Adriana, come join us. Bring your friends. I know a lot of people have a hard right. time because uh, they're working. But if anyone could make oh, the sacrifice. But, but, but you don't have to be live either. Right. True. It's all recorded. Yes. The The prayers are not recorded, but the speakers are. You know. Three o'clock is what the Lord requests. He said anything could be obtained in that hour. That's why we do that, because we believe in his promises. We're taking him to his word, and the Lord never lies. Never. So that's why we do this. You know? And people were asking me, either today or yesterday, they were asking me if some things in the Bible were true. I'm like, really? Because <laughs> you believe some stuff, but don't believe others. Some, some is truth and some is lies. And know the Bible worked that way. Well, of course, it's know, a book of truth. Let's, let's not forget the cafeteria Catholics who believe what they want to believe. Yes. And if you are getting Twinkies and you're a, Catholic, a, a cafeteria Catholic, get hot now. Start burning up with passion for your church, for your religion, for your spirituality, for your Jesus. You know? Look at what happened to Zach. Zach was one place and he was he was in the polar opposite in moments
because of our blessed mother. And remember, Zach, what we, we were talking about? The blessed mother appeared to me too. And we have one thing in common, Zach and I. We felt resounding joy. And I don't know, it felt like a whole decade after that happened. Right, Zach? It was incredible. I'd, I'd never felt anything like that. And I continue to feel it. Yeah. So, Blessed Mother is the answer to get the joy and bring you into Jesus imme immediately. So, I mean, if you've got, if you want to look at somebody who doesn't have a reason to be joyful, you know, I'm blind and I'm missing my foot. You know, yeah. I've got a nurse in here right now that's treating my other foot. Hmm. And uh, thankfully, I'm not going to lose that one. But, you know, I've got so many things. I'm diabetic. I've gone blind. I've, like, you had a stroke? My right foot. I had a stroke. Um, you know, we could probably keep going on a, on a list. I could give you to my doctor and let him just ra ramble on, you know. I'm on dialysis. But the guy's full of joy. Right. So that's because there's evidence of Jesus, Jesus in him. All because of Mama Mary. So um, I, I would like to ask you a favor to please, please help us spread this on October 31st. Not only do we want you to come pray every day, it's more important now than ever. Okay. We're ramping up. We need this. It's very vital for us, for our lives. If you can, please. But also, because we're one, we become one, you know, the Lord uh, honors the fact that we're doing this live stream. Look, we have someone from Brazil. We get, to, you know, it's, it's magnificent. Thank you for coming. But, um, but especially when um, we have Sister Didi come. And we'll surprise you with the other speakers, that, but let me tell you one thing. Two of them are be, uh, best-selling book authors. And uh, one of them is so filled with the Holy Spirit, you, you won't be able to feel it. I, I mean, you'll be able to feel it through the airwaves. Okay? So I need you guys, especially if you have the gift of good strategy, to help me spread it all over, even all over the world. Please. So I will get the information out by tomorrow. Try to touch base with us. Go on the um, go on the live stream. Oh, we have Philippines. It's three o'clock somewhere. So if we're working during this miraculous hour, we could pray in the spirit with those praying in their time zone. Yes. Amen. I am trying to learn English. I apologize for my mistake. You are perfect, Adrian. <laughs> so don't worry. The, the, the language here is love. And we are brothers and sisters. Look how God is putting us together. And God works in the small. He always has. Look at the miraculous metal. Is that gigantic? No. Zach could probably crush it in his hand, but it crushed him. Right, Zach? Right, right exactly. And David was small. Goliath was big. We are the army of God. Okay? You believe it. We have victory in ourselves. Side. There's, you know, we have God with us. We're going to prevail. We're, we're walking into a big victory. Don't look at everything around you, please. He just wants us to believe. Every place that he went, he healed when there was belief or faith. So anyway, Zach, I'm going to let you say the last word because... Uh, I, I, I still want to finish off with, um, because I had this come up in conversation again today, people that called me, is that you cannot sell what you don't own. Amen. So if you think you've sold your soul, you have not. And if you're thinking about doing it, you can't. You can give your will to the devil. All you have to do is go to confession. Your will goes back to God. Amen. And if you make mistakes, what do you do, Zach? If you sin, what do you do? You go to confession. Right. Don't give up. God doesn't give up on you. Do you know what he says? From as far as east is to the west, he that's how far he wants your sin from you. That it never meets. But his and, love. And when, when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't say, I'm dying for everyone but Karen. Yeah. Or everyone but Zach. Right. You know, he died for all of us. 
Amen. But me more. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> he loves me more than he loves no you. i don't think so <laughs> but anyway everybody buy zach's book if you want to know more about uh abortion being a satanic sacrifice go to his website allsaintsministry.org he gives a big discount if you get more than 10 what's your email again zach mystic for god at yahoo.com Mystic. If you decide you want to do 10 or more, you have to go directly to me. Okay. 10 or more, 40% off. Okay. He. This is a mission. This is his evangelization mission. So, Mystic for God. Go ahead. At Yahoo.com. Okay. So, you got that, folks. You know, get the book. Um, Zach, I, I got a book too now. I'm an author. You know what it's called? Thank you. It's called Love Club. And um, this is something that will heal the world. 100%. Because love is Jesus. Jesus will heal the world. So if you want to get Love Club, it's on Amazon. By the way, you could get Zach's book on Amazon too. Okay. You know, either way. Which one is better for you, Zach? Do you have it on Kindle? Do I have it on Kindle? Yes, I do. Love Club. Okay, I might do that. Um, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. It's, um, what is it called? Um, the audio book. Uh, no, not audio. Uh, what is it? Oh, <laughs> shoot, I forgot. Um, it's on the tip of my phone. Digital book. It's a digital book on Amazon, too. The audio is coming out soon, and it's coming out in Spanish. Someone, uh, I, might do, I might wait for the audio book. Okay. Online, I don't have an audio book, but I have it. It's on, there's a CD set. How much is your CD set, Zach? The CD set is 15. The book is 15. But if you go through Kindle, it's three. Oh, okay. So $3 at Kindle. And you could get it on your own phone. Right. And that's through Amazon also. Very wonderful. Thank you so much, Zach. God bless you. Sure, Zach is recovering you. very, very well from his surgery on his knee. Thank you for prayers for him. Yes, thank you very much for that. My knee is perfect now. Oh, I'm so happy, Zach. At least you have that, you know, and right. and your joy. So we'll see you right. all soon. God bless you. All right. Bye. Bye. Hi, my name is Karen Jefferson from John Leaves Evangelization. We've been doing this live stream to stop abortion since May 13th, 2020. And we try to do prayers each day, every day with speakers. If you would like to donate to this worthy cause to stop abortion, something that is righteous in the eyes of God, please donate to us at johnleaps.com. John Leaps, L-E-A-P-S.com or call 800 Three one three six nine three three. We could really use it, and we thank you very much. God bless you all.